you're redoing the move that you made and I'm sure you've used that before on some kind of program on the internet. Um, so back to where we was, I'm trying to get rid of this bit here. Um, so the other way is to click your eraser at the top. Then once you've, you've highlighted the eraser, you're going to bring it down to the area and then you have to click to get rid of it. So I find that deleting is the best way to do it. So, um, sorry, um, hitting the, key the keyboard delete is the best way to do it. Let me just undo that again and I'll show you one more way. So I'm going to highlight the part again and then I'm going to go to edit. And if you move down, you will see deletes there. Just hit delete and you're done. Okay, so that's basic cutting um, and deleting. Um, I'm just going to undo that move and move this out of the way. Now, if you want to um, repeat or copy and paste, this is what you do. So say this is the part that you want to um, repeat or copy, paste, should I say. What you need to do is copy it first of all. Okay, so you go to edit and you find copy and you need to make sure that the part that you want is highlighted or else it just won't copy. Um, and then you need to find out, find your positioning, go back to edit and hit paste. And then as you can see, it's now made two of that part. Again, there's other ways to do it. And if you know the shortcut keys, then that was pro that will probably be even faster for you. But this is the way that I copy and paste. Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of that second copy. If you want to repeat something a few times, do the exact same thing, highlight the part, go to edit, and you want to press duplicate and it will do one. Or if you want more than one, you want to go to repeat underneath it and then it will ask you how many times you would like to repeat that part. Input whatever it is that you want, I've put five, and then press OK. And as you can see, it's now repeated that same part five times. So if you had a, a like a particular chorus or a particular line that you wanted to repeat, that's when you would use that. Okay, so we've gone through object selection. We've gone through the scissors. This little icon here is glue. The, all this is going to do is, you see these two parts here? They were once one full audio, weren't they? So just click your glue and click on one of them and it will glue them back together if that's what you want to do. So let's just undo that. Um, the next one along is another zoom tool which will zoom you in and the one after that, the cross, is the mute. I think they're the only ones that you really need at the moment. Okay, so I've started my audio now at the point where I want it. I'm going to turn snap back on and snap it to the beginning of my project. Okay, so now we're going to just quickly discuss um, what these t uh, top icons or these, these top menus do. So first of all, file. In this particular one, you're going to need new project. Say if you're done with this now and you want to start a new one, you would click new project. You need to know what save and save as is. Um, and I advise that you save your project regular regular <laughs> regular be saving your project regular uh, because save your computer went down um, and you'd just done a good part or you'd just spent five hours doing something and it was so so tedious it was uh, not even funny um, and then something happens 
you know, if you've not saved it, you're going to be gutted. I think when Cubase does shut down in that kind of way, it does save a backup file for you or it will remember, but uh, I'm not sure. But don't rely on that anyway. Every time you have spent, you know, say like five, well, not maybe not five, but about ten minutes or when you've done something major, always save and you would press save for that. Uh, save as that's when you're labeling the project so if you want to give it a name then you need to press save as give it a name and then from there on in you can just press save and it will just keep saving it for you as well you will need the import and the export this is what I was saying before there's another way here on the import uh, another way of importing audio and MIDI just like we did at the beginning as you can see there's audio file and there's a MIDI file so that was the like the fourth way of doing that one thing and then export you will just need export mix down for now uh, a bit further down you can see recent projects and you'll be able to open your recent projects or switch between them if you want to. If you move on to the next one now into edit, we went into this one before, you've got your undo move and your redo move, very important buttons, if you do something wrong you can always back up. Um, you may use history but we don't need to discuss that I don't think at this point. As we discussed before, the copy and the paste, cut is generally the same as delete and then you've got delete and duplicate and the repeat uh, button that we used that's pretty much all you'll need in that for now okay so moving on to project there's an the add track option that I showed you before um, you'll be either adding audio or MIDI at this point you won't really need any of the others I don't think if you move on to audio if you normalize your audio when you bring it into a project then that is where you would find that normalizing I've I've read about like a zillion times but I always forget and I should really keep notes so I can always go back to stuff but I think normalizing generally bring brings it to a certain volume level um, some I did read that some people don't recommend that you do that and that there's not really any point um, but I, I was also taught to do that by somebody so um, I did do it for the longest time but you really should know uh, what it is exactly for before you start using it so if you do want to use normalize then uh, do it midi you don't really need anything in that for now and I don't think you need any of the others either for now you are free to browse around um, you are free to browse around if you like and that's the way that you're going to become experienced if you just have a look and try different things but as a beginner I'm just letting you know the things that will help you to edit a track, maybe make um, a track from scratch in Cubase using MIDI or audio or whatever, put some effects on it and then export that out. You can upload it to the internet, put it on your iPod or whatever. So you can do that just by using these simple things that I've showed you today. Okay, so that's the top icons covered. This area here, as I mentioned before, is the way I tend to adjust the volumes on my tracks. Um, as you can see, if I just move the volume down, here the numbers will change. The lower it goes, you will see a, um, a minus sign, and the higher it will have a plus sign. But what I do is I double click so it highlights in blue, and I will input my volume and then I just find that I can tweak it just so and that's what I do um, simply because you can go to devices um, and pull up the mixer 
where you'll get all the sliders, all the volumes for all your tracks. Um, but if you have kind of only one screen, it's going to take up a lot of room on your screen that, and everything's going to get busy. But again, it's just whatever you prefer. I prefer to do it right here in the main window. Uh, that's what works for me. So that's the volume area. And then we're just going to go up to this E. So when you've finished um, editing your track and it's how you want it to be so far, and you make sure that your locators are either side of the audio that you um, want to export or you want to loop. Um, if your locators are not set, then it's not going to export the right data and it's not going to loop the right data. So just make sure that you've set those. Then you need to move on to adding your effects. So let's go up to the E and we're going to click that. By the way, if you want to give your track a name, just double click here. Now mine says kick because my audio was already labeled kick and as I dragged and dropped it did it it named it for me and I can't change that now. That's why uh, if you make your own track by right clicking and add the track and then name it, whatever audio you bring onto it, it's you've already named it. Um, but I'm too lazy to do that, so I drag and drop and just let it be named whatever it was. Um, okay. So let's move on to effects. When you press the E, you're going to arrive at this window. And down the left hand side here are all the inserts. So you need to go to the first one and you need to click that. And then you'll get all the options of what's added to this machine, um, effects wise and things that I can do to my audio and stuff. Um, all we're going to be using at this point is delay reverb and compression. You'll find compression in dynamics. Um, it's not going to be a good example of the compression because I'm actually using a, a kick which is a midi kick so it's already um, it's all at the same level. My All my audio is at the same level. Um, so adding a compressor is not going to make any, uh, it's not going to be a good example for you. Where if it was a vocal, and you would you would see a difference by adding a compressor. Um, so anyway, let's just add some effects. So I'm going to go down to reverb first of all. Now, depending on what you have added on this machine, is determines what's going to uh, turn up here uh, as your options. If you're just using the options that uh, the installs that came with Cubase 5, then that's fine. I think they sound very nice. That's my personal opinion. Um, my advice is to never use too much reverb or delay, though. Um, okay, so I'm just going to choose Roomworks. Once that loaded, you will see another window, and you're probably going to think, hell heck no. Um, don't get too concerned about what all of these novels do um, because you don't need them at this point in time, okay? Because luckily for you, Cubase has some presets. So you need to click this window, this little window here, and it will load all the presets. So say if you're working on a vocal, I'm actually not, it, it's a kick that I brought in, but never mind. Um, I'm just going to click this reverb here, which is a surround vocal plate. Um, and once I've clicked that, it's going to load it for me. Great stuff. My advice is to leave it open because if you think there's too much or you want to tweak it or you want to change it, you don't have to load it up again. It's just, it's always going to be there. Just move it out the way if you want. So what I need to do is flick uh, my cursor th uh, thing, my ruler thing, back to the beginning of the track. So to do that, I'm going to press the rewind. Well, go to previous marker zero. Um, as you can see here, it's going to take me to the beginning of my track. Because that's generally what I do. I, I usually listen from the beginning. Um, now, you can, if you want to, press spacebar for play. 
which I'm going to do. So let me just hit split space there. Oh, and then at this point, you can turn your click off. Or at least I can, because my audio is already in time, already, uh, from a previous project. So it's not going to matter at this point. Okay, so let's press play.